One of the most loved shrines to Our Lady is that of the patroness of the Americas, Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. What miracle takes place that shocks the bishop? Can these events really spark the conversion of some 6 million Aztecs? In this episode, we will look at the miracle of Our Lady of Guadalupe and see what eventuates. Stay tuned. Welcome to Regina de Cor Carmeli Faith, Educating for Eternity. Juan Diego had recently converted to the Catholic faith from a humble Aztec Indian tribe. The Aztec Indians were living immoral lives and serving false gods or pagan gods. The Spanish Catholic conquest would prove both influential at the same time hostile towards the Aztec Indians. However, heaven, through the Blessed Virgin Mary, had other ideas. And here's the story. Juan Diego was walking between his village and Mexico City, where the Catholic mission was headquartered on December the 12th, 1531. Along the way in the village of Guadalupe, the Virgin Mary appeared speaking to him in his native tongue. She told him to build a church at the site. But when Juan Diego spoke to the Spanish bishop, the bishop did not believe him, asking for a miraculous sign. The Virgin told Juan Diego to gather flowers from a hill, even though it was winter, when no plants bloom. He found Spanish roses and presented these to the bishop. When the roses fell from his tilma, that is a kind of apron, an icon of the Virgin remained imprinted on the cloth. And here are the words of on three separate apparitions with Juan Diego of our Blessed Mother with the first apparition dating on December the 9th. Also notice that these words from the Blessed Mother to Juan Diego are such tender and beautiful words spoken by a true mother. She says to Juan Diego, quote, Juanito, dearest Juan Diego, Juanito, my dearest son, where are you going? No one understand well, you, my most humble son, that I am the ever virgin Holy Mary. I am the ever virgin Holy Mary, mother of the true God, for whom we live, of the creator of all things, Lord of heaven and earth. I wish that a temple be erected here quickly, so I may therein exhibit and give all my love compassion, help and protection because I am your merciful mother to you and to all the inhabitants of this land and all the rest who love me. Invoke and confide in me. Listen there to their lamentations and remedy all their miseries, afflictions and sorrows. And to accomplish what my clemency pretends, go to the palace of the Bishop of Mexico and you will say to him that I manifest my great desire that here on this plain a temple be built to me. You will accurately relate all you have seen and admired. Be assured that I will be the most grateful and will reward you because I will make you happy and worthy of recompense for the effort and fatigue in what you will obtain of what I have entrusted. Behold, you have heard my mandate, my humble son, go and put forth all your effort. In her second apparition on December the 9th, the Blessed Mother says to Juan Diego, Hark, my little son, you must understand that I have many servants and messengers to whom I must entrust the delivery of my message and carry my wish. But it is of precise detail that you yourself solicit and assist and that through your mediation, my wish be complied, compiled. My wish be compiled. I earnestly implore my son the least and with sternness, I command that you again go tomorrow and see the bishop. You go in my name and make known my wish in its entirety 
that he has to start the erection of a temple, which I ask of him. And again, tell him that I, in person, the ever virgin, holy Mary, mother of God, sent you, close quote. Now, these are two attempts that the poor one, Diego, has gone to the bishop with to no avail. And finally, on the fourth apparition on December the 12th, the Blessed Mother says the following. Hear me and understand well, my little son, that nothing should frighten or grieve you. Let not your heart be disturbed. Do not fear that sickness, nor any other sickness or anguish. Am I not here? Who is your mother? Are you not under my protection? Am I not your health? Are you not happily within my fold? What else do you wish? Do not grieve, nor be disturbed by anything. Do not be afflicted by the illness of your uncle, who will not die now. Be assured that he is now cured. Climb, my dear son, to the top of the hill. There where you saw me and I gave you orders, you will find different flowers. Cut them, gather them, assemble them, then come and bring them before my presence. My dear little son, this diversity of roses is the proof and the sign which you will take to the bishop. You will tell him in my name that he will see in them my wish and that he will have to comply to it. You are my ambassador, most worthy of all confidence. Rigorously I command you that only before the presence of the bishop will you unfold your mantle and disclose what you are carrying. You, relate, you will relate all and well. You will tell that I ordered you to climb to the hilltop, to go and cut flowers and all that you saw and admired, so you can induce the prelate to give his support with the aim that a temple be built and erected as I have asked." Close quote. On that particular day, two miracles actually occurred on December the 12th. The most beautiful Castilian roses which Juan had asked to gather could not grow and bloom because there was first of all frost on the ground and the ground was very infertile where only cactus and thistles grew. Listening to the Mother of God, Juan gathered them with our mother's help in arranging them in his tilma, or what we call poncho, and told him to show them to the bishop. When he had brought them to the bishop, the, the bishop was amazed at the roses, but was even more amazed at what began to happen to Juan Diego's tilma. Right before his very eyes, the image of Our Lady began to form on the cloth. The picture of Mary was beautiful and the bishop fell to his knees. He had the church built at her request without any further question. Wow, what a great miracle. This tilma is still intact even today. So if you were to go to Mexico City, you will see this tilma and it's been over 470 years. The colors have not faded and the cloth has not dis deteriorated or discolored in any way. It has been on display in the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe all this time. The appearance of Our Lady on the tilma is very significant for the Aztec Indians. God had dressed her in a way that they would be able to relate to her and understand who she is. She was dressed in a royal clothes that showed that she was very important, perhaps even a queen. She had a sash tied around her waist, which meant that she was with child. For this was the way the Aztec women dressed when they were pregnant. And she also had the symbol of the cross at her neck, which she, which she was the same symbol the Spaniards had on their ships and in the churches they built. And on her beautiful dress were all sorts of designs and flowers. But there was one flower on her dress that was very, very significant. It had only four petals. And to the Aztecs, the four petal flower was a symbol for the true God, the God above all gods. 
This flower was located on her abdomen, right over the place where Jesus was growing inside of her. The Aztecs immediately understood that this was the mother of the true God. What a beautiful miracle. On the brink of war, the Aztecs, who had sacrificed humans and often killed 50,000 people in sacrifice per year, and the Spaniards lived completely different cultures. But this miracle of the Tilma would change Mexico forever. The Aztec Indians embraced Christianity and it helped the Spaniards to treat the Indians with respect and as human beings. In the course of seven years, some six million Indians converted to the Catholic faith. Wow, what an amazing event. And this was the biggest conversion in the history of the church. Juan Diego, the, the humble man who, whom Our Lady appeared to, was canonized in the summer of 2002. Mary's appearance also put an end to the worship of these stone gods and the, and the ritual of human sacrifice as well. So let us pray for Mary's help today to bring an end to the human sacrifice of Christ's child, children, the unborn, through abortions and to convert non-believers. Our Lady of Guadalupe is, is also called the Patroness of the Unborn and her feast day is on the 12th of December. Thank you for tuning in and I hope this episode has inspired your faith in some way to turn to the Blessed Mother who was without ceasing there for me and you. And if you'd like this video, we ask you to subscribe, to give us a like and to share for those you believe will benefit from it. Thank you for, for listening and I look forward to speaking to you soon. God be with you.